Hey, how you doing? So I recently made my very first Cosmo format PCB sandwich. Basically just three voltage controlled triangle wave LFOs in the same module, including a mixed output connected to an RGB LED. It's seriously hard not to get sucked in just watching all the lights doing their own thing. But anyway, I've had a few people asking me, how exactly do you make a PCB sandwich? Well, let's go and take a look. First off, you need two slices of bread. It can either be wholemeal or multigrain, but for this, we'll just stick to plain old Wonder White. Next, you want to give them a good spread of butter, making sure to take it right to the edges. Next, we can begin adding our PCBs. Depending on how much flavour you want, you should really only need one or two. And for something extra, we can also add a slice of cheese and a little bit of mayo. And there you have it, a perfectly delicious PCB sandwich. Mmm, absolute perfection. Oh, mmm. Well, that's all for today. Until next time, I'll see you later. Ah, just kidding. Let's actually go see how it's made. So the basic idea with the PCB sandwich, as it's called, is that you have different layers of the circuit or module interconnected together using header pins and sockets. So in this case, we have one big PCB at the front to make up the front panel, where we can see all the holes for the I.O. components and the silk string to show what's what. Behind that is the PCB which holds all the I.O. components like your jacks, pots and LEDs. On the back of this board, we can also see where a few header sockets have been soldered in as well. And this is what the jacks, pots and LEDs are connected to. At the very back of the sandwich is the main PCB, which contains all the circuitry for the module. In this case, we have a header pin soldered onto the front of the PCB with all the other components soldered onto the back. This way, the I.O. and main PCB boards can clip together completing the circuit for the module to function. So with all that being said, how is this actually designed with everything so perfectly aligned? But let's open up a few files on KiCad and take a look. So the first thing that I do is draw out the entire schematic into one file and then split off any IOs into a separate file and then use labels connected to header pins and sockets to interconnect the two circuits together. So we can see this in the main PCB schematic where we have labels to the IO components which are then connected over to the headers. Then over in the I.O. schematic, we can see the exact same header connections, as well as all the I.O. components. Then once I've got all the circuitry worked out, I then move on to laying out the actual PCBs. The easiest one to start with is the I.O. board. So if I open up the file, we can see how all of the I.O. components have been laid out fairly evenly. I did this by splitting the board up into a grid, using the silk screen, and then displacing each component along the correct lines of the grid. Once I have that worked out, I place the header socket somewhere along the grid where it will provide the most structural integrity, so usually towards the side somewhere, and then right click and lock it in place so that it can't be moved by accident. Also note how they have been flipped so they can be soldered onto the back of the board. After I've worked out all the placement of the components, I'm then able to start connecting all of the traces to where they need to go. In terms of size of the I.O. board, I've also made sure to make the height around 160mm so they can actually slot into the synth box without being obstructed by the rails. Once the I.O. board is done, I can then go back to the main PCB and work out the connections in that one. So a really handy way to work out the alignment of these header pins and sockets is to literally just copy and paste the entire I.O. board over into the main PCB file. So by doing this, we're then able to lay the header pins in the main PCB over the top of the I.O. header sockets until we get the alignment right. After that, it's just a matter of deleting all the I.O. components until we're left with just the pins. From there, we can again lock the header pins in place and then begin laying out all the circuitry for the main PCB. After the main PCB has been worked out, I can apply the same copy and paste trick to work out the front panel. Opening up the front panel PCB file, we can see how the alignment of the I.O. board coincides with where the holes of the components on the panel are. So again, it's just a matter of placing the holes exactly where the components are going to sit, and then deleting all the I.O. components until the edge cards are just left. 
Also note that the front panel has a height of 200mm so it will sit flush against the rails inside the synth box. And that's all there is to it. I honestly spent ages wondering how the hell people were making these real nice looking sandwich designs. And it wasn't until I had to do one for work. Oh yeah, I work for Alco Electronic now too. But I was finally able to work out the gist of the whole process. And it turned out to be way simpler than what I thought. So hopefully after this, you'll be able to start making your own PCV sandwiches and have your next design looking real sleek. And if you have any questions, feel free to just pop them down in the comments below. So for real, until next time, I'll see you later.